This is a VR headset. It's compact and lightweight, allowing a level of comfort rarely seen in VR headsets. The resolution is higher than anything else on the market, making everything in VR pop and eliminating that ever-present blur seen in current headsets. The refresh rate is high, making motion sickness caused by a low refresh rate a thing of the past. The field of view is high, and when purchasing the headset, it comes with custom glasses lens inserts for free. It's a PC-linked headset, but allows you to be wireless with a separate attachment. It has built-in speakers like the Index and a mic of high quality. Eye tracking, face tracking, it's everything we as PC VR users desire in a headset. And it doesn't exist. Maybe one day, but not today. So what do we have today? Let's check. PC VR is dead. Is PC VR is dead? VR dying? PC VR is dead is a Short not. answer. We're cooked. Long answer. Not cooked. PC VR will never be a thing again. I have barely gotten any VR related content and none of my friends who used to like VR even care anymore. Change VR forever. Change VR forever. Change of VR forever. Change VR forever. Okay. I don't think VR is dying. It does feel like a drought though. I think like all industries and technologies, there's ups and downs and people have a hard time looking at the whole picture. Instead, hyper-focusing on just the up or just the down. This video is about VR headsets and hardware. And in order to better visualize everything, I wanna draw a timeline of VR. And as with all timelines, it starts at the beginning. Not the beginning you're thinking of with the virtual boy in 1995 or some government research project in the 60s, but the start of modern headsets in the VR craze we know of. The Oculus Rift, DK1. Top of the morning to you laddies! How's it going, Brad? Why, Oculus Rift just arrived. Came in this box. The actual unit itself. Isn't that cool? It's a space mask, I don't know. Whoa, I have hands! Oh, that's awesome! Maybe you remember this, or maybe you just never watched the big creators' videos at that time, but this is what I consider the true start of VR headsets. It was the start of an era. Seven inch screen, 640 by 800 pixels per eye. 60 hertz refresh rate, 90 degree FOV. It wasn't the best, but compared to anything anyone had seen of VR before then, it was an incredible new experience. Top of the line stuff for 2013. Oh no! Oh Jesus Christ! Ah! Ah! Okay, that's enough. I'm not overreacting, I swear. Oh, I can't even look down. Oh no! 2014 comes around and we begin seeing a trickle of what was to come. The Oculus DK2 came out, an all-around better VR experience compared to the DK1, and the first time you'd have all the cables combined into one. Technology was advancing. Why does it look like the inside of a vagina? Woo! Yeah! It is, it is actually visually distressing looking down a cliff, though. Jesus f***! I thought my arms were gonna get chopped off there for a second. The Samsung Gear VR released, bringing the first use of turning a mobile phone into a VR headset. All in all, things were still getting off their feet, but the creators kept creating, bringing more hype. 2015 was a dead year in VR. Nothing really came out, but we all knew things were coming. Ups and downs, remember? One notable event was the Google Cardboard, bringing shitty VR p to horny men all over the world, some of who definitely used it as a starting point to get into VR as a whole. 2016 was the year of VR. The start of modern headsets may have begun with the DK1, but for many people it didn't truly start until 2016, with two massive headsets that brought mainstream adoption. The Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. My Oculus Rift finally arrived! This is not the Oculus Rift, this is the Valve HTC Vive. The Oculus Rift was the culmination of Oculus tech developed since 2012. When comparing to the Oculus DK1, pretty much everything drastically improved. Except for the field of view. But hey. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Oculus Rift still used a single tracking camera. It's one camera that sits in front of you and tracks your movement. Great for seated gaming terrible for moving around, and it only came with two later in 2017. But there was another option. 2016 didn't just see the Rift. 
it also saw the original HTC Vive. Instead of a single tracking camera, we saw the introduction of base stations, or lighthouses, mounted cameras that sent out lasers to track where you are in your room. Pair that with something I'm sure you thought was present in every headset spoken of till now, but wasn't, proper controllers. Uh, get to work. Ah! The Oculus Rift came with an Xbox One controller. The Oculus Touch controllers, you might remember, weren't included in the bundle until 2017. The Vive controllers allowed a level of immersion and play incomparable when paired with the base stations, allowing you to wander around your room, moving wherever you want, and finessing things with both hands in a 3D environment. I'm like in the Matrix. I'm like the Neo. Where are you in the night of the fourth? Oh! Who killed Barbara? Those two headsets weren't alone in their release. There was also the first console VR headset in the PlayStation VR. In terms of specs, it wasn't on par with PC VR, but allowed VR to become more mainstream and enter the public zeitgeist. Look what I got. This is a new one that's come out by Sony for the PlayStation. Sony's solution that sits squarely in between putting your phone into a folded piece of cardboard. The other ones are for like high-end computers, those types of things. And not everyone has that and they cost a lot of money. This is a cheaper version of those ones. We also saw the first ever Pimax released with the Pimax 4K, which gave you 1920 by 2160 resolution per eye. Though I never knew anyone who ever bought a Pimax. 2017 was the year of Microsoft's Windows Mixed Reality. We saw a flood into the market of cheap Mixed Reality headsets that many of people ended up buying. Seen VR become even more mainstream. Most of them weren't very good. Another breakthrough that came in 2017 is in games and trackers. With more VR headsets available and hype in VR rising, more games got into the market including social games like VR chat. Anything can happen. You've seen that video where the guy is trying to kiss the anime girl? That could be us. So with VR games becoming more present, more interest in VR headsets started to rise. With that too, Vive released their first iteration of the Vive trackers, which alongside the release of VR chat, allowed grown men with more money than they know what to do with pretend to be anime cat girls on the internet in full immersion. The future was here, and it was only gonna get better. Oh God, fetus baby, you're here already! I said uh, never, I never wanna see you in here. Oh, it's so much freakier looking in VR! Kill him! Kill him! Get in there, kill him! Everybody kill him, come on, kill him! 2018 was a big year for VR. HTC released their new headset, the HTC Vive Pro which came with mixed reviews, but generally it was an upgrade. I don't plan to swap out my original Vive for this Vive Pro that I got for free. There was also a big upgrade when it comes to tracking. Now Valve and Vive had had a working relationship for a while, and you could really see that in 2018 when they released the Valve Base Station 2.0. Vive also released their new Vive Trackers 2.0, just one year after the 1.0s, making full body tracking smoother and creating a scenario where the virtual cat girls in VR chat become even more realistic. Oculus released their Oculus Go, the first attempt by Facebook to make a standalone headset, a headset that doesn't require a PC to run VR, which was most importantly, wireless. Seeing the desire for a wireless VR, Vive released the Vive Wireless Adapter, which brought the comfort of wireless play to the quality of PC VR, creating a never before seen community of pole dancers in VR chat. Thanks Vive. 2019 came and with it, so many VR headsets. Facebook came through with two big ones. The Oculus Rift S was their final PC headset, as they focused on standalone headsets from this point on. Something you can definitely see, as the Rift S didn't come with any base stations or cameras like the previous Oculus Rift headsets. Instead, it uses the cameras on the headset itself to track where you are in the room. Oh, oh, Henry, Henry, Henry! Ah, oh, got him, I missed! The Rift S was impressive, but not overly so, as Facebook also released the first Oculus Quest. This is the Oculus Quest. Ah, 
blah, blah. It is a completely standalone VR system. Now we're questing. The future is now. Vive released the HTC Vive Cosmos, which saw pretty much the same specs as the HTC Vive Pro, but with no need for exterior base stations. Not many people bought it. There are a bunch of blind spots. If you move the controllers up close to your face, you lose tracking. Vive also released the Vive Pro Eye, which brought eye tracking to the masses that could afford it. Eye tracking opened up the doors to so much potential. Using eye tracking, you can see exactly where somebody is looking and make only that spot clear, saving on computing power and giving you a smoother and better experience in VR. We also saw two new players in the VR space. Vario with the XR1 that was so expensive nobody bought it, and the big one that even I bought, the Valve Index. This is the Valve Index. Look at it, ooh, shiny. Ooh, whoa, oh, whoa. This is the high-end consumer VR headset. Oh boy, that is, a, that is a bit of nausea. Look at that bad boy. Super comfy controllers. Wowzy wowzy, I might vomit, I just need a break. The Valve Index pretty much took the cake in every facet. A 1440 by 1600 display, 109 degree FOV, over the ear stereo speakers and a nice mic. And the biggest thing, up to 144 Hertz refresh rate. Add on the new controllers that came with it and you get a crazy VR experience that to this day dominates the market. Whoa! Oh my God! And to top it all off, we saw the first and really, so far the only in my mind, AAA VR game, Half-Life Alex, which came free with the index upon purchase. Immediately, best looking VR game I've ever seen. Soda. I taste nothing. Zero out of five. Valve really treated us well that year. 2020 saw the arrival of something that changed the VR landscape forever the pandemic. I have today declared that the coronavirus presents a public health emergency. We will be suspending all travel from Europe. More than three billion people in almost 70 countries and territories have been asked to stay at home. The pandemic brought hard times for many, but not two, streamers and the VR salespeople. Yeah, anyways. She can stay. No, oh she can God. stay. She's hot. She can stay. The butter, you can get out. <laughs> With the pandemic brewing and everybody staying at home, the interest in VR skyrocketed. Which is good news for the VR industry as a whole, and bad news for people like me, as I ordered my Valve Index as soon as things got started, and then had to wait for eight weeks, as my order said it would ship in eight weeks. I got it in 14 weeks. Valve worked together with Microsoft and HP to bring the HP Reverb G2 with a resolution of 2160 by 2160, 90 hertz with inside out tracking. It was a headset people could actually afford. But the big headset of the year was the Oculus Quest 2. The Oculus Quest 2. Oh no, it's happening now. I'm jazzed to try this thing out. Back off, back off lady. I keep expecting the cable to be here and I'm like, oh yeah. Exactly. I'm... Welcome back, there's some jobs ready for you. Well. The Oculus Quest series, in my opinion, is the most impressive series of headsets for one reason. Every subsequent headset has been better in every aspect. Look at the difference between the Quest and the Quest 2. It's amazing what Facebook managed to create. Or should I say, Meta. I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. 2021 was a bit of a letdown for VR. People bought their Index, their Quest, and didn't see a need for a new headset. But the industry kept it coming. Vario came forward with the Vario XR3, bringing amazing quality to the three people who could afford it. The Vive Pro 2 came out with better stats in comparison to the Vive Pro in almost every category. Though once again, we see a VR company drop the OLED display for LCD. This is selling for as a full kit, $1,400. There were a bunch of standalone headsets that were released over the years, including the HTC Vive Focus 3, but none of them really succeeded. The Vive Tracker 3.0s came out, being smaller than the 2.0s and giving over double the battery life. Vive also released the Vive Face Tracker, which finally allowed those VR chat e-girls to bring a full range of expression into VR. My anime cat girl fantasies are starting to get granted. 
2022 was a year heavily focused on mixed reality, the key of which was the MetaQuest Pro. Meta decided that they wanted to make a headset for the working man, a headset you could use as a replacement for your PC. It used pancake lenses, which made it able to be much smaller than previous headsets. It also came with face tracking. Comparing general stats with the Quest 2, you'll notice some things are better and some things are worse. But in general, it's an alright headset. It's a pretty good, technologically speaking, a pretty good headset. And something Meta didn't expect is that this became the headset everyone in VR chat bought to get full face and eye tracking. The Pico 4 was launched and immediately became popular in non-American markets. I'm in an American market, I never saw it. On the PC VR front, Vario released the Vario Aero, the first headset they released at an arguably decent price, which gave the same specs as the XR3 for $4,500 less, which would be great if it ran at a higher refresh rate. All in all, VR progressed to an amazing place, but the pandemic was over for the most part. People were heading back to work, back to school, and didn't have the time for stay-at-home tech like before. We started to see discussions online about VR dying because of it. 2023 was a big year for VR. Meta released the MetaQuest 3, their most impressive headset to date, with 2064 by 2208 resolution per eye and 120 hertz refresh rate. Coming in at only $500 compared to other headsets with similar specs, it blows all previous headsets out of the water. Just don the headset and controllers and jump right in where the first thing you'll notice is the absolutely incredible video pass-through. PSVR finally got a new upgrade to the old one for PS4 with the PSVR 2. The PlayStation VR 2 headset is just plain better complete with eye tracking, high resolution OLED panels, inside out tracking, and great controllers. It was a massive upgrade for console gamers, assuming they could afford a PS5. Vario released another too expensive for use headset. Microsoft shut down their mixed reality platform, stepping back from VR as a whole. And a new player in the space came forward with the smallest PC VR headset to date the big screen beyond. The big screen beyond. First thing you'll notice pulling the beyond out of the box is how incredibly small and light it is. I just, I can't get over the fact that I've actually got a VR headset on. It feels like I've got glasses on or something. They advertise it as being one sixth the weight of the Valve Index. Even up until 2023, the most commonly used PC VR headset was the Valve Index. It was the big boy in 2019 and people still rely on it for what it is. Big Screen Beyond was advertised to many of us to be a replacement for the index. The quality jump was massive, but the problems were big. Everything's so crisp, as long as it's in the incredibly narrow sweet spot. But the tech is amazing, and it's a glimpse into what may come in the near future. And now we're here, in the current year. And what do we see? A new player released the best AR headset ever, and the Apple Vision Pro. The butterfly is eating my donut. It's not a VR headset, it's AR, but the tech is what matters. Full face and eye tracking with quality lenses, able to track where you are in a real space and place virtual windows in it. It offers a view into what we could do with mixed reality headsets. Very exciting. Pimax released another headset that nobody I know will buy. And then now purchasable, but will ship later than this year, is the Somnium VR1. We'll have to see what that brings. And now we're here. Current day as of recording this. We've caught up completely. Now we got a lot of headsets over the years, but for the most part, everybody I know uses the same few ones. Quest 2, Quest 3, Quest Pro, or the index, and a few others scattered in between. This is the full timeline. And looking at everything that brought us here, we need to ask the question again, is VR dead or dying? Looking at the progress of technology and improvements over the last 10 years? I don't think so. I truly believe we will continue to get more headsets and more options every year from now on. So what are all these videos and comments about? Well. There are about three things. One, and the biggest, is games. They're about games. 
It's no secret that PC VR gaming has stagnated at absolute best. I noticed that there's not that many exciting new games out. It didn't turn out to be the gaming revolution many expected. The last major VR game I've played that's outside of VR chat was Half Life Alex. Voila! Monkey! Which came with the Valve Index in 2020. That's not a good look for VR gaming. But it's only a matter of time before new games come out and new ways to make games come out. The problem with VR is it's hard to make games for it. A 2D platformer? It's been done a million times and devs know what to expect. A fully interactive 3D environment that you approach in virtual reality? That's fairly new and hard to do, but it won't be forever. What games get made, I think just comes down to what devs are used to, what they want to make, and what they can make with the tools available. And there's a whole other discussion about AAA studios and indie devs. Two is kind of a mental thing, as in it's in our heads. VR was new, like really new in 2016, never before seen for most people. And now it's not new. So when we see newer headsets come out, we all have headsets already. So they need to be really good in order for us to consider buying them. We don't replace our stuff until we feel we need to or are forced to. And we haven't seen a lot of new advancements in VR that make us really get that feeling that we need to replace our Valve Index. But I do think it's coming pretty soon. Lastly, kind of ties into last one. VR is not new and we've all kind of moved on and lost interest. Not really lost interest in that we don't want it to get better, we do but we constantly go through fads. Like right now, it's AI, but AI will fall off in terms of public attention, just like VR kind of has now. You used to see so many videos from the biggest creators of them using VR, but they, for the most part, have stopped. And as you aren't exposed to it, you forget about it, as the internet is flooded with content to distract you. So every once in a while, you think back and wonder, what happened to that? Is it dead? But the tech won't stop. VR isn't going anywhere. It's a really cool thing that has unlimited use cases if the tech catches up, and it will catch up. There's more money being put into VR development now than ever before. And companies like Meta, for sure, are going all in. Looking at the full timeline, that's very clear. Things are improving, and they will continue to improve. And knowing how much I look forward to getting in VR with friends now, how much I look forward to the betterment of future tech, how new games are still coming out, even slowly. Is VR dead or dying? We'll see. Give it a few years, give it a decade. Nobody disagrees that VR has extreme potential and I can't wait to see where it goes. I am sick of this will change VR forever videos though. I, I, I don't wanna see any more of those.